come from Stoke on Trent, all he ever saw was a horse bringing coal or milk or bread round. He used to save the crust for him, save the crust for the horses. People wouldn't remember all them days. So, so what brought you to Newmarket then? Well, I was only five stone and there wasn't much else I could do. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you've looked after some tremendous horses yourself, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. Uh, all our family have. Annie's done more, more group winners than I have, my missus. And uh, I did Agedal that was over there and uh, Opera House, Music, Maestro, Notable Guest and blimey, a couple more, I can't remember now. Oh, Time Allowed, she won a couple of group, group races. Yeah, I've done a lot of good horses over the years, been lucky. Being a lad, it is hard work, isn't it? There's no two ways about it. You've got to be fit. I use my bike every day. I've got a car, but I'd never use the car. I always use the bike morning and night. But you've got to be fit to ride them as well, especially at my age. Bloody hell, you know, I can't, I can't back pedal now. <laughs> yeah, but, um, yeah, you've got to be fit to ride them. So how, how many lots do you ride every day? I ride two lots now, but um, the third lot, I'll go around every horse, 68 horses, and make sure they've all got A and water so nothing gets missed. And you've got to make sure that they drink, you know, otherwise they get dehydrated. If they don't drink, they don't eat. And they can get ulcers or anything, you know. And you must feel proud that Sir Michael nominated you for this award. <laughs> Shocked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's good of him to do it, and it's good of the Arabs to, to do all this for us as well, because there isn't much for the racing people when you think about, back on it. And they've done a tremendous job over the last ten years, wherever it is, to put all the money up for us, because there wouldn't be nothing otherwise, hardly anything for... I mean, you work your lifetime in racing and just hope some, you know, you get appreciated sometimes. Look at these lot here. <laughs> <coughs> Behave yourselves, you <laughs> lot. I, I don't even pick the phone up at home and you... Come on. I tell you what, though, Jeff, it must be nice looking after these good horses as well, riding these good horses. It makes a difference, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. But I, like I, I said uh, a while back, I treat them all the same. And if I've got an ordinary horse, I try and get it to where it's supposed to be. You know, if it's only going to Lingfield or whatever, you, I'd always try and get it to where it... And I'm happy if it gets to... But I'm disappointed if it doesn't get there. I mean, I've done a lot of good horses that have never seen a track. Mm. You know, and that's absolutely sickening, that is. I can't m imagine retiring, you know what I mean? And I'm 67 now, I'm nearly 67 now, and I can't imagine retiring, but it'd be a bad, it'd be a horrible day if I have to. <laughs> but God knows when that'll be. So how long have you been here then, Joe? Uh, this will be my 11th year now. Um, I come from sort of like the outskirts of London, a place called South Oxy. <laughs> it's quite famous actually, it was on the telly for a... They did a programme on it called The Choir. What is it that's so good about horse racing, do you think? Well, to me, when I get on a horse in the morning, it don't matter what's ever happened to me in the day, when I get back on a horse, I know I'm all right. And as I say, at the end of the morning, when you finish riding your free lots out, you just feel you've achieved something. And I don't know, when I, whenever I've, I've always thought that, you know, just, just being around them, they've just got that so, such a simple way about them, horses. And I kind of like the simple life. And that's what's kept me in it, it's just, you know what I mean? It's, I mean, they're just like my mates, you know what I mean? Without them, I haven't got a job. Joe's a, he's a good candidate. Um, you know, he, I think he embodies everything that you would like to see in a you know a top class stable lad, you know good rider, um, good horseman, looks after his horses immaculately, and and I think on top of that his his real asset is his enthusiasm for the job. Tell us the story about when you went over to the Breeders' Cup at Wilco. Oh well, there was trouble with uh, John's passport, and uh, so I just long and short of it was I ended up. I'd always rode him out. I was out there, I ended up out there with him. As soon as I arrived there, got a phone call from Jeremy. Gave me a thousand orders. <laughs> and, I didn't, and then when I said I knew them all, he made me read them all back. And luckily I got this girl to dictate it all down. <laughs> so, otherwise it'll lynch me if I got anything wrong. Um, and from that moment, so I just... I knew, I thought to myself, if I kill him, I'm in trouble. 
<laughs> you know, to be in charge at the Breeders' Cup, I knew I was, I, I was better hold on and better get it right. So I marked down everything I did, every single thing. And I just, uh, even still, Jeremy still said the slats were a quarter of an inch out. Quarter of an inch, the slats. <laughs> but, uh, but I knew he would find something. But there you go. As I say, um, at the end of the day, when the horse won, I mean, that was just fantastic. And he was going to, Frankie was going to ride him the day before, just for a canter, but he was quite fresh. And Jeremy said uh, to Frankie, well, he's quite fresh, do you want to just let Joe ride him? And Frankie went, yeah, yeah. And I thought that was, that was a great moment, because until the moment Frankie sat on him, I sat on him all the time. And then when he went and won, it was just, after that race, I f felt fantastic. I felt, you know, I've achieved that, yeah, you know. It shouldn't bring you that back down to earth, don't worry about that. It shouldn't say, right, do this or do that, but it's just that achievement at that moment, you know what I mean? It just, it's the best feeling. Them sort of horses, they just make you want to get up in the morning, you know what I mean? Um, you know, it's, that, that's what it's all about. And you, you've been here, you said, 10 or 12 years. What was Jeremy like as a boss? Hard, fair, down the line. Likes, uh, what's the word? His attention to detail mm. is second to none. Right. Don't miss. Don't miss anything. If you miss anything, he'll find it. And, and Joe, you must be really proud that Jeremy's put you for the award. Oh, a second, you know, you, that you can't beat that, you know, it's just, you know, uh, it sort of says you're doing your job good, mm. you know, for this week. <laughs> The family had nothing to do with horses at all. One day I was sat watching the racing on television, 15 year old. I was very small anyway. I said to my mum and dad, I think I might, you know, I mind being a jockey. Two weeks later, she got me an interview in the employment exchange. Three weeks later, I was in Newmarket. <laughs> that was, never touched a horse in my life. And, and when did you come to Andrews? 81, when Ian was training, obviously. And I suppose you've experienced a lot of the really good horses here. Yeah, I've rode quite a lot of them. You know, Selkirk, quite a lot of them, Lock Song, all horses like that. Gone right through the works really since I came here. I mean, Selkirk stood out for me. I mean, he was a quality horse right from word go. And what the gallop, he was absolutely phenomenal. You could tell, you think you've ridden a Group 1 horse till you've actually sat in a Group 1 horse. And when you have, you know. And how does it feel to be nominated? You must be very proud when Andrew put you forward for this award. Absolutely. I was, I was proud of Andrew nominating me in the first place. You know, and to represent the yard and racing, you know, you can't get any better, really. And Andrew, as a boss, what's he like? He's good, yeah. A bit more laid back than his dad. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know his dad was more rant and rave than Andrew. Andrew's an head down job and, you know, just gets on with it. A lot of lads have come through here, you know, Martin Dwyer, Liam Canary, David and William, the recent ones. And I've rode work with all them and hopefully a bit of me's rubbed off on them, like, you know, riding work. They all rode me when, I was si when they were 16. And is there anything at the moment, was there anything you'd change about what you've done within the game? It wouldn't, no. I've had 40 good years. I mean, racing's been really good to me. I can't complain at all. I've been all around the world. You know, people say it's worse now than it was, but I think it, I think it gets better, really. Mm. You know, it's only the prize money side of it seems to suffer, but for us, the conditions are a lot better than when I came in 72. Mm, I bet that was... <laughs> £1.60 a week, no days off. <laughs> no holidays. And I was born in Chesterfield, so I went down to Newmarket, and I don't think I went home for a year and a half. Never had a holiday. And I was at 15 year old. It was a bit daunting. You know, I nearly, nearly left a few times. But I'm glad I stuck with it. Mm. Very enjoyable, I should imagine. Yeah. I mean, I say I've been all around the world with this yard. And, it's and successful. There's nothing you'd change about the way that you've done things in racing. You, you had a few rides, didn't you? Yeah, I, I rode 20, 30 odd winners. Looking back, I think I could have been a bit more dedicated. You know, I was a little bit went on the drink and ate too much and got fat too quick. <laughs> a bit like Jason Weaver. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, if I'd have gone, if I would have changed something, I think I'd have been more dedicated to riding. Mm. I'm 55 this year, and I still feel really fit. You know, I go to the gym a bit and keep fit and keep the blood going round. You know, you seem to benefit from it. I think, well, the outdoors does you, keeps you going anyway. You know, when you're riding good horses like this, you know, you feel a lot better in the morning. It gets you through the winter, thinking of the summer.